For today's DIY, I have Debbie from Debbie's Design Diary here. Yay! Yay! I'm so happy to be here. I'm on the Zeb and Jamie channel. Woo woo! woo. So a dance on our channel. <laughs> You're probably wondering what we're doing today. Zeb made these corbels. Debbie sent us a picture that yes. she found on Pinterest. I love and them. of course, Zeb made them better. They're called the Debbies. We're gonna paint them and we're gonna mount them above my window back there. People ask us all the time, like, what we're supposed to do with corbels because they buy them and they're like, do I just set them on a shelf? But you can actually make a shelf out of them, which is what we're doing. And if you want to watch the first part of this video where Debbie actually interviewed Zeb and I, yes. you get the deep, dark, and decrepit details. I'm telling their story, which is amazing. You, you probably don't even know their story, even though you've been subscribed to them forever. They have an amazing story. I mean, they have five kids and they make five videos a week. That's amazing. I got some good juice out of you guys. I got some gritty details, you guys. You're gonna wanna watch the video. Okay, so we're using Dark and Decrepit, which can be used kind of like a glaze. It also has a sealer in there, but it can also be used as like a stain, very comparable to like a dark walnut. It's all natural, no VOC. Um, you can keep it on the shelf. It has a pretty good shelf life. Debbie, how long is the shelf life on this? For a long time. You just don't want to contaminate it. So if you put a dirty brush in your dark and decrepit, you could open a can and it could smell like rotten eggs, but it still works. So that's happened to me before. And what I do is I just paint it on anyway. And then after it dries, the smell goes away. And it's kind of dark. So if you like the dark, you could leave it. Um, or you could brush like squirt it with water and wipe it down. In this case, I'm just gonna take a paper towel and just wipe it so that way it'll dry faster. And I'm not worried about seeing the grain because we're gonna put paint over the top of it. So it doesn't really matter. So we're using, obviously, Debbie's DIY paint. It's clay-based, all natural, no VOC. Mermaid tail. Mermaid tail, old 57. It's basically like magic. We're gonna make a little paint magic here. So you pour some of that in there. Okay. She sent me a picture of what she wanted to look like. And I do this a lot. I mix colors to get what I want. Oh, this is lighter. That's okay. That'll work. So this oh, is old. Because 50 we had already mixed that. Yeah, we already minute. mixed this. So this is old fifty seven mixed with uh, white swan. Okay. okay. Well, I'm going to. Oh play. my god! I'm You're going to stirring it with the end of the brush. Really? You're going to talk to me about brush care. <laughs> Look at this okay. brush. But then when this you go to paint, you're gonna get it all over your hand. I'm gonna use a paper towel. All right. Maybe we shouldn't stir it all the way because then okay. we have kind of this mo like marbleized. Can you sure corbel? We'll, we'll just leave okay. it not yeah, quite mixed. Let's try up. it halfway stirred. See what happens. Debbie does the same thing I do. Just get the paint on there. You can smooth it out later. This is what happens when you don't wait. Do you see how the brown is getting in her paint? That's because we painted these 15 minutes ago. But I kind of like it. No, it looks good. Yeah. But if you don't want your paint to mix, you need to wait two hours. Right. Or 24 if you're real serious. Real serious. Real serious like. We're gonna you're make the queen it... of chippy. How do we make them look chippy? That's well, we're gonna paint them and when they start to get tacky, then we're gonna use this scraper. Okay. The bobber thing. But I definitely want them chippy. Oh, we're gonna try to do chippy. It's that chippy effect. Right. This is really pretty. It's not as uh, bohemian as your picture. No, but I like it. But I like it. How many pieces of furniture do you think you painted? Um, gosh, seven. Hundred? There's seven thousand. <laughs> Um, no, not 7,000 or 700, maybe, maybe like, really, like, maybe a hundred pieces of paint, pieces of furniture. See, now you're making me nervous because you're asking me questions. Do you know how, do you want to take a guess? How many pieces have you painted, Jamie? <laughs> well, there's 365 days in a year, and right. I usually paint five to ten projects a week, at least I used to. So let's just say I paint seven projects a week. I probably painted 1,200, 1,300 products, maybe more. No, I have not come up No, pro and it, if you include like small projects, like little things, like smalls, I've probably painted a couple thousand all total with furniture. And... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I have not painted that many pieces because, well, it's quality over quantity. <laughs> it's good or it's good enough. 
My early years, I made those Christmas ornaments, and yes. I probably made, single-handedly, made over 10,000 Christmas ornaments and mass-produced handmade things for five years. And so you get to a point in your life where you're like, this this is not working for me. I've got to find other ways to, to do what I love without being a human factory. We'll put the link to the squeegee below. And we used it the other night in our live, and what it does is it kind of like distresses it. And if the paint's thicker, you can like pull it up. Let's see if we can get a chunk. Oh, I can't get a chunk on here. And we're going back to the dark part. Oh yeah, I like that. If you don't like the way it looks, it's still not all the way dry, so I can like use my finger and manipulate it. And you want to definitely do it along the edges because that's where it would naturally wear. Along the routered edges? And along the routered edges, yep. Yeah. Along the detail. Nice. And what we can do when it dries is, uh, this is not really chippy. We can do like a wet distress maybe. Or we can use some built-up paint and kind of smush it on there and do a yeah. little bit of that textured clay. I love it and like the bleed through just totally disappeared just by running this squeegee thing across the surface. Like I don't see any, do you see any more bleed through? No, it kind of mixes, it. well it's all water based I so think it, it looks kind of beautiful. Mushes. And yeah. this, we created a whole new color with, with the mermaid and the old 57. It's the this old looking, 57 so, year old mermaid. I am excited. <laughs> All right, so I like to go both ways because distress doesn't always happen one way. But do you have like a tic-tac-toe situation when you do that? Well, you just don't want it to look like, uh, like streaky. So see streaky. this like kind of thick built up paint that's got on the squeegee? I'm gonna like wipe yeah. that. Like instead of stra scraping it off into the trash or on a rag, I'm gonna run it across. It gives and it texture. And wipe it back on to give it more texture. I'm gonna steal some of yours. Hey, what happened to yours? I don't know. I wiped mine off on the table. Yeah, you're not supposed to wipe it off on the table. You're supposed it's to so good it. you never waste any of it. Hey, right, it's liquid gold. How come Zeb doesn't have to talk? Because I'm the camera guy. So we're going to be using DIY wax, which is amazingly creamy. We're just going to put this on here, and this helps seal it. When it's wet, it really intensifies the color. When it dries, it'll um, not be as intense, but more intense than it was when it was dry. Do you know about the wax freak out factor, Jamie? What is the wax freak out factor? When you first apply the wax, a lot of times it will look patchy and uneven and people freak out and they think that they've ruined it and the paint can even look sort of translucent. But you let it dry and it evens back out. So it goes from dry to wet and then it evens out again and then it's kind of dull and gummy looking and then you buff it and then it's like the last step where you wait for it to dry and then you buff it then it's this beautiful buttery smooth gorgeousness so debbie wanted to add some detail in all this routered edge so we're using diy dark wax doesn't take very much the reason why we clear waxed it first is if you go straight to the dark wax you're going to get a very dirty kind of finish right. and if that's what you want like some people love a good dirty wax but if you don't want it to be super dirty looking, then you need to clear wax or big top or some sort of sealer on it. So you have a little bit more control. And then if you get too much dark wax on, are, is that it? Are you, is, you like ruined it and you have to paint over? No. Or is there a way to like bring it down a notch? I, if after it's dry, it's too dark waxy, come back in with the clear wax and you can pull off the dark wax with the clear wax. Right, it's like an eraser. Sometimes I will like on purpose just smear a ton of dark wax in because I want it to get in all the nooks and crannies and then I'll get the clear wax like an eraser and pull it all back, pull it out, back out so it's only in the low spots. So like right now I totally have a ton of dark wax in here. I, I can just wipe it back and then it'll just stay behind in all the little detailed areas and then if that still is too dark then you can add some more clear wax. All right, so this is where we're gonna be putting the shelf on the wall. It'll go over the window right here. I'm just gonna be putting these anchors in. They're just sheetrock anchors, 3 8 drill bit, and put these in the wall, and then the screw goes into this. Now that the anchor's in the wall, I'm gonna go ahead and put this screw in, not all the way, because this is what I'm gonna hang the corbel on for the shelf support. All right, so I've got the anchors and the screws in already. 
and I just got this wide angle so you can see kind of how much this corbel shelf is going to change this window and the walls here. It's always the moment of truth when I hang things to see how level and square oh, everything is. Oh, it is so beautiful. I'm so glad you rounded the edge too. I think it looks really good like that. Last thing I'm doing, I'm just taking these screws here and I've got a hole drilled into the top of my shelf, well the top of Debbie's shelf, and I'm just anchoring it down into the corbel so everything stays right where it's at. Thanks for joining us today with Debbie from Debbie's Design Diary. Make sure you subscribe. Because yes. if you don't, you're going to be sad about the things you missed out on. Right. Subscribe. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> We're going to give you the product list because you're going to want to know because you're going to want to create this at home. So, Mermaid Tail. We've got White Swan mixed with Old 57. We started out with the Dark and Decrepit, which is a great all-natural, no VOC stain and sealer all in one. Right. And then we did the clear wax and the dark wax. Yes. We also used the Paint Pixie brush. So and don't, the squeegee. And the squeegee, which we're going to, we don't sell that at our store, so we'll put that Amazon link. Everything else you can get at jamierayvintage.com, including the Debbies. They probably won't go up for a few days, so I be patient. I love them. They are so good. They I'm are good. so happy with them. I cannot even tell you. And every time you see them, you can think about us. And you can order them without any paint on them and make them any color you want them to be. They're 10% less. That yeah, way. if you click yeah. unfinished on all of our four world home candlesticks, you can create whatever finish matches your decor. Just click unfinished, you save 10%, and then you can do what you want. Yay! I feel like Yay. I'm this weird, creepy guy just standing back here. <laughs> Should we dance? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna dance. So make sure that you subscribe. So make sure. Now we're gonna Hit have to dance note. at every video. Can you rap? Um, so we're going to be using DIY uh, wax, which is amazingly creamy and has like, it's so good. You can even, have you ever used it for chopstick? Cause no. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Serious? I mean, I wouldn't ingest it, but well, it's good for your skin. Well, you don't want to eat a tube of chapstick it's either. Love beeswax, canuba wax, candela wax, saracen wax, and isopher. I'm sure that's all totally good. Or if your hands get dry, like on your knuckles. Oh yeah, I have, I have. I've totally used hands. it for that. Yeah. Pedicure, manicure, and. Elbows. Yeah. yeah. And you can wax your, your corbels, which is what we're doing. And now there's lipstick in oh my wax. <laughs> <laughs> lipstick in the wax. It'll just add to the. It'll just add, it's like kissing. <laughs> Literally, yeah. 